In this video, I'll show you how to create a beat store with WooCommerce. Let's get straight into it. Throughout this video, we'll create this beat store here. For example, we've got a few beats for sale and here we're displaying some custom information such as the artist's name, the album, the BPM, time, producer, genre, and so on. And you can create more custom information as well, okay? So if you wanna create a similar setup on your WordPress website, we'll be using WooCommerce to power the e-commerce part of our store and we'll be using advanced custom fields so we can add these custom information to our website and then finally we'll be using the AOV up product table plugin so we can display it in this particular format and customers can quickly filter by the particular beat that they want okay so we can hit reset let's say they wanted a particular BPM again they can just quickly filter and find the particular product that they want and then finally they can add it to their basket and here we're streamlining the checkout process using the AOV up checkout plugin. So again, I'll leave a link to all the resources mentioned in this video in the description below. And with that being said, let's head over to our dashboard. Assuming you've got the required plugins installed and activated, the first thing we want to do is create our custom taxonomy and custom fields. So for example, we might want to create a artist custom taxonomy. So we're going to use this later on as well for customers on the front end to be able to filter different beats via their favorite, maybe producer instead of artist, okay? So we'll use producer instead. Um, we can create custom fields for the BPM or even turn it into a custom taxonomy. Before we move on, let's quickly establish the difference between the two. So custom fields, we typically use it when we wanna add extra information to a particular post, whereas custom taxonomies we'll use when we wanna use that information across various different posts. So I think for the most part, we'll be using custom custom taxonomies and to do so we'll use ACF advanced custom fields so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this here let's click taxonomies and we'll just click add we'll go with genres okay because it matches what we're doing here so we need to select the post type that we want to append this taxonomy to so in this case we're just going to select product and then we can just hit save changes Okay, again, you can create as many of these as you want. So you can create one for the artists, maybe one for um, the producers as well. All right, and then for the pulse type again, we'll select product and let's hit save changes. Now we'll move over to field groups. All right, so I've already created one ahead of time, but in your case, you'll just click add new. And then for example, I've created this music field group, okay? So essentially I'm grouping all the different fields related to our beat store, okay? So for example here, we've got artists, we've got the album, we've got the BPM, and then we've got the time as well. So in your case, you'll just click add field. Then here we can select the field type. So for example, um, artists, I've selected a checkbox field type. So again, it's very similar to the custom taxonomy. Again, here we'll give it um, the label, we'll give it the field name, and then we'll add up the choices here. So let's delete this and I'll just show you how I actually went about creating these fields. Okay, so again, as I said, this is a checkbox. This is the artist. And then here I've just added a few of the different artists that we've got on our site here. How you choose to group this is totally up to you. Um, for example, we could have just added a text area here. And then on the product page, when we add in a new beat, we can just enter in the artist name. But if you've got like, say, a handful of artists and you just want to make adding a new beat to you store faster if you select the checkbox here and then you list out all the artists ahead of time when you go to upload it it'll just streamline the process and i'll show you that in a second all right so once you've added all your fields we just need to scroll down to where it says settings and then here we'll say post type and then we'll say equal to product and then we'll just hit save changes all right so with that out of the way let's actually go ahead and add a beat to our site okay so i'm going to head over to products all right, and in your case, you'll just click add new. Since I've already created a few ahead of time, I'm just going to go ahead and edit um, one of these, okay? So for example, let's edit this particular product. Okay, so here you'll just add um, the beat name. We can add the beat cover here. And in here we'll see our custom fields. Okay, so we can see this music um, field here. And in here we've got a few options. Also, if we look to the right, we'll be able to see our custom text underneath. So let's scroll down. 
and in here we can see producers and we can also see genre as well okay so let's go ahead and fill out this information so again as i said we'll add the beat name we'll add the image we'll go ahead and select the artist from here we can select the album as well we can enter in the bpm and the time and the duration of the particular beat and in here we'll select single product and we'll make sure we select virtual and also downloadable so these two are very important let's go ahead and set our price here here we can upload the wav file or whichever format you're using so I'll click choose file all right and i'll add this particular file here it will just repeat the beat name so in this case it would be this one all right, we can add a limit to how many times the customer can download this particular beat after they've made a purchase, or we can just leave it empty, meaning they can download it an unlimited amount of time. All right, so let's scroll down. In a short description, if you want to add a preview for this particular beat, so for this section, it's super flexible. We can do it in a few different ways. One, we can just click add media here, and then essentially we can just add the sample of this particular beat here, okay? So whereas here we're adding the full file, in the short description we're just adding the preview. The other option is you can use a audio player plugin and then basically they will give you an option to display the preview here. For example, here we're displaying this file icon and if I click this play button, then it will play the audio. Okay, so if you want to display it in this format, then again, I'll leave a link to all the resources um, in the description below. But essentially, I'm just using a particular plugin and here it's given us this short code, which is generating that play icon. So either method's fine. So again, this step's super flexible. You can use any audio player plugin and then just add it here. Okay, All right. So for producers, we can go ahead and add our producer. So let's say Brian on the beat. So that's one of our producers. And then the genre is, let's say, rock, for example. And we can add tags as well. So again, this is just giving our users just a different way of finding and filtering the particular products in which they want, okay? You can also set the category. Um, so let's hit update. Let's view this particular product. Okay, so this isn't the best user experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to display it in a table format similar to this to just make it more user friendly for our customers. Okay, they can quickly find and filter by the particular beads they want pretty much instantly and quickly purchase the product. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this product table now. So we'll head over to product table here. And then in your case, you'll just click add new table. Since I've already created one beforehand, I'm just going to go ahead and edit this particular product table. All right, so we'll just give it a name. It's just for internal purposes. Then we'll click on form information here. And then here I've got a few columns. OK, so let's quickly have a look on the front end and then we'll come back over here and show you what's going on. So here we've got the cover, which is basically the product image. And here we've got the sample, which is a short description. Here we're displaying the custom field, which is the artist name. Again, a custom field, which is the album. Another custom field, which is a BPM and a custom field, which is the time. We're also displaying the tags, okay, and a buy now button. So these are our columns. So if we head back over here, okay, so here we can see the cover which is basically just the image. So in your case, you'll just add image here. Then if you click the pencil icon, we can rename this so we could say cover, for example, okay? And then just hit update and just X this off. Since I've already got it here, I'm gonna delete this. Essentially, just go ahead and drag and drop the different columns here. So let's just quickly show you what we'll do. So image, um, short description. So this has got our beat preview and then we can display our custom data. So we'll just click custom data here click the pencil icon and then here we can choose from a post meta and then we just need to paste in the meta key here okay so to get the meta key if we head back over to advanced custom fields let's go on fields group let's edit this music field that we created okay so for example artists if we click edit here it's got the field name okay which is usually in lowercase so this is the meta key essentially okay so we'll just copy over this and we'll click post meta and then we'll just paste it in here and then just hit update and we can keep doing this for all our custom fields when it comes to our custom taxonomy it's slightly different it's actually easier so we can click custom data again edit and then this time we'll select custom taxonomies and then here for example we can choose our producers 
custom taxonomy and then just hit update and then we can do the same for our so again let's add another custom field and let's select custom taxonomy and we'll do the same for genres let's hit update and we'll exit this stuff all right so let's remove these two and let's rearrange our buy button okay so our buy button is our add to cart button and we just rename it to say buy okay okay and that looks fine so let's scroll down um image size so we can customize the size of the album cover the default settings fine so we'll ignore this if you're using a audio plugin to display the preview then you do want to enable short codes here because the audio plugin will most likely give you a short code to add to the product page okay so just make sure you enable this option for our add to cart um, on our example we're using this cart icon so you just click upload and then you basically just add your cart icon okay let's click on bulk add to cart here i've just set it to buttons only we've enabled the ajax add to cart behavior and for our variable product we're linking customers over to the product page to make their selection or we can actually just show it in a drop down so they can choose directly from the product table or the form control here i'm actually filtering our product table to show only products within the beats category and that's just because on this particular site i've got um, different products such as washing machines and so on so it doesn't make sense to display the washing machine for this example so that's why i've added a filter to only display products within the beats category but in your case you'll just ignore conditions if you just want to show all the products on your store okay all right so filters here i've set this to be based on the product table we can select custom to customize the filtering and we'll come back to that shortly okay so we'll just leave it to based on the product table for now um, a lot of these i'm just going to leave as default let's scroll down to form design so we can customize the design but i'm just going to leave it as default for now and then we'll just hit save changes all right and now let's head back over to the general settings and then we'll copy the short code of this particular product table which we just created okay in your case if you want to replace your store page with this product table you'll just click on shop pages here and then just select the product table in which you just created okay and then essentially it will just replace your shop page with this optimized user experience all right, but since I'm gonna actually be embedding this particular product table on a different page, we've copied a short code and now we'll just create a new page. So in your case, you'll just click add and then page. I'm gonna edit this page since I've already created it beforehand. All right, and you can design your page in Elementor, um, Divi or any other page builder you wanna use. I'm just using the default WordPress system. As you can see, I've just got some text here. And then here we've just got our short code, okay? So if we click update and preview this page, here we can see our beat store, okay? And one of the benefits as well to using taxonomies over custom fields with this particular product table is that now we can actually filter by the custom taxonomy. So here on the system, we've only got one um, producer, which is Brian on the beat right but we can filter by this particular producer we can do the same as well for the genre okay so we don't have a reset filter button so let's quickly add that in all right so we'll just enable this reset button here and let's hit save changes and now let's refresh this page okay and now when we make a selection we can quickly reset it okay all right so one final thing that we can do again this is optional but highly recommended is we can actually optimize the checkout experience so let's say for example the customers added this to their cart now they'll have to go ahead and view cart and then view the checkout page and then check out so it's just a lot of steps so we can actually streamline that using the aov up checkout plugin so i'm going to quickly customize our checkout ex before we customize the checkout experience let's have a quick look at the flow so let's go view cart all right and then you'd go proceed to checkout all right as you can see everything looks clunky and dated okay so let's change this now okay so now let's head over to aio checkout all right and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a mini cart so let's click mini cart here let's enable our mini cart we can specify the location and we can also hide it if the basket's empty as well 
we can enable order bumps. So with this particular plugin, you can create various different um, upsells and cross sells, which is highly recommended. I'll leave a link on screen to a different video showing you how to upsell customers. So let's say, for example, if they purchase a standard license, so you might want to upsell them on a checkout to get the commercial license, okay, for that particular beat. So again, as I said, I'll leave a link on screen. Let's just save changes. We can customize it as well. But again, we can leave this as default for now. All right, and let's create a new checkout. All right, since this is a beat store, stuff like the shipping address we don't need. So we'll just use the billing address and we can remove some of these fields as well if we don't need them. And we can also add custom fields to our checkout page. All right, so let's head over to design. We'll select this particular design here. And we can also customize the thank you page as well. In this case, it's highly recommended that you probably customize the thank you page. Again, it depends on your market segment, but so maybe you want to show them the steps to actually extract and utilize the particular beat in which they've just purchased. So I'm just going to select a pre-designed thank you page. Let's navigate over to settings. We'll enable this. We'll set it as our global checkout. We can add a name. It's just for internal purposes. And I'm just going to hit save changes. All right, so now let's refresh this page again. OK, and when we add an item to our basket, we can quickly keep an eye on what we've got in our basket here. And then instead of clicking on cart and then checkout here, we can just go directly to the checkout page. And as you can see, it's a much more streamlined and user friendly experience. OK, like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you've got any questions, leave it in the comment box below.